Smisha Palbach McLean, Hamia Gober as a Quach and Gaelach, or uh, as we say now, Ballon and Gael, Highland Village in Iona, Cape Breton. And as you can see from the slide there, we have a uh, we have a, an overview of our site. Um, 43 acres in the heart of Cape Breton on the Bredore Lake, sitting up on the top of a hill where our ancestors who came from Scotland liked to settle so they could get a good view too, I believe. Um, we're Ballon and Gale, where we used to be called Quack and Gale Walk. We're Ballon and Gale now with our new branding and logo process because Ballon and Gale is more true to the um, village, village of the Gale, the place where Gales live. And that's where we represent Cape Breton and Eastern Nova Scotia for the emigrants who came from Scotland, brought their culture, their language, and their lifestyle with them. So Highland Village um, represents those people to the rest of Nova Scotia and to Canada. There you are. Go. Ah, here we go. So established in 1959, uh, there was an organization who wanted to bring, who had gone to Scotland and seen the great ex exhibition over there, and wanted to bring a Scottish style village to Nova Scotia. So eventually the group got together and much debating and much um, Gaelic speaking in the house in, in Halifax, they finally decided to put it in Iona. And we became part of that decentralized system that Lisa was talking about this morning in the year 2000. So our average visitors the last few years has been about 19,000. We have 11 period buildings, um, first person animation, and hands-on experiential programming so people of all ages get to experience firsthand what um, the Gaelic culture is all about. Four full-time staff, 19 full-time seasonal, four contract, and about 138 uh, program volunteers. And many of them uh, come from the school because they're very, the, the children are right across the road from the village and they're very interested in what we're doing. We've got about 3,500 numbered artifacts we have a lot of intangible folklore, sound clips, images, um, all based in what we do. Um, a hands-on working collection that is used for the programming and for animation, and it's all related to the lifestyle of the rural gale. Um, you see three images there of some of the things that we have. That The little rope is a handmade rope done, woven up from be, uh, birch strips and uh, that's one of my favorite things in the collection. And as a lot of people do, and as I was talking yesterday, we were rolling the mats. Well, I've got a few mats to roll, and some of them were on, on display in the church. And then we have an image collection of older images of Gales and other people in the, in the uh, immediate area. Our image collection is not as large as some others, but we have a very large digital image collection of contemporary and modern day things that we uh, use on a daily basis for our, our programming. Come on. This is one of the interesting things that's in the burn. So we have a, a, a scope which goes from the little rope to this great big hearse that was last used in Antigonish in 1946. And I've always been threatening to play the corpse in the back when we have our Halloween program, but nobody's taking me up on that for some reason. Come on. If it's going to be this slow, it's going to take a long time. Perhaps I put too many pictures in here. We're very fond of pictures at our place. Yes. Our display areas are many and varied because they're in all of our buildings and each of our buildings for the most part has more than one room. So we've got our, our McDonald house, we've got our church, our log cabin, the forge is there, our carding mill, 
the House of the um, 1880s period and the 1920s and our general store and other assorted uh, uh, rooms and whatnot there to let people see what the lifestyle was like for, in the eras from 1790 up to about 1925. So we've got to have a lot of things to represent those, those periods. This is the original store plan for the upstairs that I found. Um, at one time, it was, it's been used for many things, but at, at one time, when this plan was made, it was being used as costuming and, um, and administrative storage. So that's the plan we had first. Um, and then this one is, is cleared out when we started to, to put storage. The C, if you can see, the C1 and the C2 were racks that we had in the middle for doing that. And I'd started making a, uh, a plan to uh, identify the space. And this is the, the occupation, first occupation plan of the way it is now, and what the types of, or the many varied things that were in there. Um, and as you see from the next slide, most of it is collection. There's the blue, the blue that's in there just represents three uh, sets of snow, sewing machines that came from a tailor in Christmas Island that have not been accessioned as yet, but they're up there. So we've got slanted ceilings in this room on both sides um, that make it a little, make it quite difficult. We have about eight, I think eight or nine feet in width in the middle that has full ceiling, but the rest is all slanted. Okay, and this is a, couple, a few images of the storage before the reorganization. There's a chimney in the middle that's right behind those storage racks that we saw. We've got a lot of different types of artifacts set up together, and then there's an image there of the storage rack uh, where Catherine and I had done some, some reorganization work of our, on our own a few, uh, what, three or four years ago. We, and because Catherine has the the actual artifact handling knowledge, she helped me work with that. And we did our storage evaluation. Um, so for the store, we're mostly in the orange. Yeah, I need, we need a reorganization. I, I, kind of, I felt our management was pretty good except for um, inventories were not regular. We don't have a movement policy for artifacts. And there's a few other, there's other things in that category. Uh, the visitor center storage, we're doing two sections. So the visitor center storage, uh, there's a few people here that have been in our building, but it's, it's we have an, a big A-frame building for our, our main uh, visitor center entrance. And they put in a roof in the top, and up in that, what do I call it, the triangle section, is storage for me along the top. So up there, I have no, no wall storage. It's all slanted ceiling right down to the floor. And it's, we had to make our own plan because there was never a floor plan uh, done up for that. And Catherine is, Catherine is the chief plan maker and drawer. And she, she did a really, really good job of that. So. The green stuff is all collection, um, working collection is red there, but we don't really have much of that stored up there. We have a piece that's not shown on this diagram because it's, it's, it's for archival, but it's, in an, it's, another, it's a step down and it's on the end, and I have to maintain that as archival storage for the time being. So we have, we have some non-collection and some not accessioned yet. And this, these are images of that. The first picture up at the top is looking towards the lobby of the front of the building. The only access is in my office is the one with the little ladder in it. That's one way I access that. And at the other end, the picture down in the right on the bottom is two doors that open up into the lobby. And there's no stairs or ladder there. You have to get 
a big ladder and bring it in. And you have to be careful because there's a little bit of a slant in the floor downstairs. So we, it's very, not a good place. I don't know how we're going to fix that one because we're kind of stuck with the floor, but we have built shelving units up there that are built to the slant. So the bottom shelves are really long and the top shelves probably are about that wide. And they're on panels that are supposed to move out, but over time they're just wood on wood, so they don't slide very well. But we have you know, items are put on the shelves, but as you can see, the shelves were not built to suit the items, so there's a lot of wasted space, and we have done some measuring there, and we figure we can rehouse some of those small things in boxes and store them on those shelves, and that will help out with that. And then the visitor center evaluation, because the building is, is it's watertight, it's, it's, uh, humidity controlled, all that kind of thing. It's a, little, it's a little better than the one up that's not heated and not humidity, humidity controlled. So the store, we probably have, I may have figured this out wrong looking at somebody else's that I saw before, but anyway, I got about 70% floor occupation of the available floor. And I, I think about 88% unit fullness and 80% of the room height and overall, it's probably that these stores probably 80% full. And most of them have been inventoried and accessioned within the last three or four years. But because I know what the things are, I can find them quick. But if somebody who didn't know what the thing was, they would probably take 10 minutes to find it. Okay, the main building, did I skip? No, yeah. the main issues there is the back door is not tight, the window's not tight. Um, and in the visitor center, units are over full and a lot of things are stored on the floor. And shelf, the uh, furniture issues in the visitor center, those slanted shelves are not built to house the kind of artifacts that are on them. They could have been more compact, but with our reboxing, that should help that. And in the store, there is not enough shelving and it's not movable, it's fixed in place. And we hope to, to fix that. And I have put two beauty shots in here because I didn't take pictures of the management offices. <laughs> um, but movement control is not monitored, although the access you can see in my office uh, for the, uh, the visitor center storage, nobody's getting up there without su su a supreme effort. And in the, in the store storage as well, it's a, the door to that is, is out of the way and over to the side, and, and there's a chain in front, so staff does not let people up there. And we don't have, I, I haven't been as assiduous as I should be to update the database or things like that. So urgently, we need to get that inventory under control, we number and map where we're going to put those, look, those ice pieces because the numbering system is not good. The hanging storage and the roll storage in the visitor center are two, two of the priorities as well. And that's it. There's Catherine and I. <laughs>